Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Untitled Reviews. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Kung Fu. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, now with Fitz's and, um, book, they now uh, have an idea of what... Uh, Russell Tan has been up to. Obviously, like, he's been working towards this whole Enclave situation for a while to get to the Enclave so that he could get to specifically the Inner Sanctum because we now know, they know and we know that he's after a very specific mallet to ring the bell. So, and also, I know, uh, the price that he's trying to get in good with to get inside of the Inner Sanctum is put by uh, Singh from... Um, it's played by the actor who played uh, Captain Singh in um, The Flash. I was like, hey, that's pretty dope. Uh, but regardless, it ends up being this uh, situation of they have to get to the mallet before Russell Tan is. So they kind of create this elaborate plan to basically get themselves invited. And they end up bringing everyone in on it. Evan, Althea, and uh, Ryan. Now it's like, right, we're going to have to sneak in. But not only that, we're going to have to sneak in, make a replica of the mallet. A replica so good that will fool Russell and anyone in the Enclave, specifically the Inner Sanctum, and be able to sneak it out of there. So it's a whole um, family, Shin family um, uh, situation of everyone kind of coming together for this. So first they go to Jin because he has a history in, you know, restoring like a uh, art restoration or something or something of that nature, but obviously he's like I've been out of the game for like 30 years, but with his skills, he, that's the only means that they have, they have to make this happen, and I love that it's like, right, have you told your mom about this? And it's like no, you know, we'll go to her next, which, it's like, mom will say yes, and Althea's like, oh, she's gonna 100% say no, and then she actually says yes, and you're like, wait, what? It's like, right. She's like, I know how important this is. Is this potentially saving the world? And on top of that, it's making sure that Mia says he's safe, so I'm ready to do this. So the whole plan is, Althea set it up so that the catering, the, the people that were actually catering the event canceled, and now they're gonna have to find people, and they add it, um their family's restaurant to the short list and now the person that's coming to test the food obviously it's someone that uh Maylene is like oh my god wait they're coming because it's someone she even says like it's like one of the first english books she bought when she came to this country and so it's like right it's about making the perfect bite so she's doing her thing she's kind of nervous but she's giving it her all and like all the work she's putting into it you cut back and forth it's pretty dope uh getting Jen and Maylene uh, a part of all of this because at the same time Jen is doing his thing. I love we got a little insight into Jin, too, that obviously he came to this country, you know, wanting to pursue a career in art, and his parents are like, you're not going to be able to make that happen, and he struggled. It, it didn't all work out in the end, but he says in the long run, he has no regrets. Like, he ended up starting in a restaurant, working in the kitchen of a restaurant. Um, I think it was, like, specifically cleaning or something like that, but it's like, right, that's where he started at, but it's like, right, that that was part of his journey that led him to all of this, and he's like, now I'm able to come back to, like, my passion, I'd be able to come back to that after all these years, and under these circumstances, it's pretty dope, so, uh, working with, uh, with, uh, Henry's dad, they were able to get the materials necessary, and it's it's so cool to get to see Jen go to work. Like I said, him and Maylee, you cut back and forth with them orchestrating everything while Nikki and the others are like running through the plan of what they've got whole well, planned, and so that actually culminates with a lot of stuff. Well, for one, uh, Henry asks Nikki about the fact that she still hasn't told Mia about what her destiny is, being the hybrid and everything, even though she knows, but M M Mia uh, Nikki doesn't know at that time. And the big question is like, well, why haven't you told her? And for Nikki, it's like, right, she's already got so much on her shoulders. She's got, like, her mom's death. Her dad ended up betraying her. And now I'm going to add this to it. It's like, it's too much. Like, I want to at least have some good news. Want to take down Russell Tan, stop him, have some good news before you deliver the bad news. But sadly for Nikki, like, the winds were kind of taken out of her sail because Mia knows the truth. And Mia tells her, like, I know everything. I was like, how do you know? She landed to her. He's like, well, when did she tell She's like, it doesn't matter. It's very important because it's like, wait, that woman... Hasn't she broken into Nikki's house before, Jilan? Did she do that last season? If I'm not, maybe I'm mistaken. Um, well, you know, Mia did earlier this season, but I'm trying to remember if Jilan's ever broken into their house. I feel like I remember that, but I could be misremembering. 
it's like, why didn't Nikki tell her? It's like, you lied to me. At least Jilan is telling me the truth. Once again, Jilan, you're just a means to an end. She knows she can't take Russell down on her own. No matter how skilled she is, Russell's got a lot at her disposal. But knowing now the truth about Mia being a hybrid, what that's cap- what she's capable of, she... Uh, as a hybrid, she it, it, the equivalency of probably having an army. So, and Jilan, she's manipulating her because she knows she has a kindred spirit. Like, you want revenge because he murdered your mom? He murdered my mom as well. We're kindred spirits in this. No one will understand what we've been through, which is ironic because it's like, right, you killed your sister who meant a lot to Nikki. So, it's like, you know, Nikki can understand wanting revenge against someone who wronged someone that you cared about. So... But I'm sure Jilan would kind of like be like, oh, we both lost our mothers. You lost your Shifu. But like Palin gave Nikki a new lease on life, put her down the path that she oh, she's in. And if it wasn't for Palin, she wouldn't be where she is right now with her family. So she owes Palin a lot. So, you know, she's probably almost like a she was a master, probably almost like a, a, a mentor, almost like another parent in her life. But I'm sure that Jilan and Nikki, I mean, and Mia would probably like disagree in that regard so it was like the loss it's understandable but not the same as us losing our mothers under the circumstances to this specific man but regardless it's just like right she's just me is just a means to an end to her um and nikki explains to her like i'm sorry i didn't tell you the truth it um but at the end of the day because mia was like right listening to what jilan said is like wouldn't the easiest thing be just to kill um, Russell, but it's like, that's not what we do. We don't go down that that route. Because if you do that, you are going to lose yourself to that. You're going to become someone you don't like. Because killing Russell is going to make you become like Jilin. And she's still, whether she'll ever admit it or not, she's struggling. To, because every, cause what did she, all the murder, death, and destruction she caused, what was it for? She didn't get the eight celestial weapons, plus Russell is still alive. So it's kind of like... It didn't, uh, didn't even get the, all that power, you know, it was all taken from her and returned to the earth. So it's like, she walked, everything she did was for nothing, you know, so. And she doesn't even admit that, like, also, she's talking to the alchemist. So that kind of showcases, like, yeah, she can't be 100% trusted either. Once again, just a means to an end to get her revenge. But Nikki explains to her, you... I'm sorry I didn't tell you the truth, but at the end of the day, you have to you you can be the one to decide like who you want to be. Like don't let anyone else define you. Uh, because Nikki wants her, it's like that's why I'm going above and beyond like this, is because I want you to be able to have a normal life. When this is all said and done, because for Mia, she's always spent her entire life running. Like she, her and her mom or may she were like locked away from everyone. Then she ran away and you know, after her friends died, she ran away too. So she's always been on the run, always training, preparing for this day to come. And it's like having a normal life. She never even really thought about the after all of this. She was always just, you know, it was always just moving from one place, never settling down. And because anytime she did, she lost people. So, but, um, Sadly, she walked in on Ryan and her talking about, and Nikki talking about it. I don't know if she caught the end of it, but Nikki was like, right, I am scared because that look in her eyes, like, she's like, I saw the same look from the hybrid I saw in Mia's eye when she was around all those stones. And so it's like, do I think she's capable of doing it? I don't know, but I am scared in that moment. You see, Mia was like, oh, I thought she really is actually scared of me. But then Nikki was saying at the end, but she's like, I know the good person that Mia is. So I, I hope she caught the end of that being like, right, she might be scared of me. But it, I think that still takes the forefront of it. Even if she said all that, it's still the thing of she's scared of me, she's scared of me, she's scared of me. And it's also probably like, right, she doesn't want me around her family either. Like, she's scared of me of what I'm capable of because I might I'd also like hurt her family so I'm sure a lot of that's going through Mia's mind but um on every front they uh they worked everything out luckily uh Maylene killed it on the uh dumpling front which I love that she's like wait I have to make 2,000 of these it's like well how am I supposed to make like 2,000 of those like uh, by because it took like six hours just to make one. But to be fair, it's like it doesn't have to be great or anything like that. It just has to be like no, you, you know, that's, it's not the main reason by the operation. So I guess it's just like. I guess even making 2,000 dumplings like they normally would would still take a very, very long time because like the, they have until like the next night because of the party. And uh, Jen ended up having to go to another family because one of the materials he needed is very specific. And he needed to cut a um, a jacket that belong that's a very that's made from the same material. It's kind of a family heirloom. It's like um, 
something a guy has like that's left of his grandfather or something and Jin's like I'm sorry for doing this but if you if you tell me no I'll completely understand but he's like this will end up helping the community because he can't go into specifics about it and it seems like he does ultimately let Jin uh, use because Jin needed to cut it and it just it would ruin the jacket in the process but and the sad thing is at the end of the day you're kind of like was it all worth it in the end because you know jumping ahead a little bit Russell still walked away with the um that the mallet, so I was like, was it even worth it in the end? So, I was actually worried that Mia might jump the gun and kind of ruin the operation a little sooner just because Russell was there, but she was able to pull herself back because she wanted to believe, like, no, let's do this. I don't want to be that killer. I want to, I want to handle things Nikki's way. So, I also love that Evan's like, oh yeah, I'm sorry I had to take Dennis's ticket. And Althea's like, don't worry about it. Uh, it allowed him to keep a prior engagement. And Evan's like, oh, D&D? No, uh, Magic the Gathering. I'm like, Dennis, you freaking nerd. Oh, you're such a nerd, Dennis. Uh, and I think that's kind of an interesting di uh, dialogue they have with that. Um, what's the guy's name? It's not Ian, it's was it Ian. And it's like, oh, he's like... Oh, Chinese. He's like, I'm glad to see that the this uh, group is getting a little bit more inclusive. It's like, probably is mainly white people in there, isn't there? Well, we saw some security guards, but I don't know if the society itself... Because we saw, like, there was a black guy security guard, but I don't know if, like... I didn't actually get, a like, a view of the rumor or anything. I'm like, is it mainly just white people there? Probably. I think that's how a lot of... Not every secret society, but I feel like most secret societies kind of... Uh, flow that way ethnicity wise but you know like I said I'm sh there are I'm sure there are some secret societies that are very inclusive so I just I just thought that was interesting um but overall the plan kind of went off I mean what really screwed them over was uh price moving up everything because they were I'm curious what was going to be well never mind I know in the long run what Russell's plan was because he had he's like right getting stuff ready and I'm like what is this because I thought like are you going to bum rush the uh have your entire like uh our army with guns and everything bum rush the uh event like I thought that's what it was to make it easier just make sure you got to where the um mallet was but it's like no Russell found his very um, tactful way of doing it. I also love that he shut them down because Price wanted to move it up because he's like, uh, let's put Russell out of his misery. He thinks he's actually going to join us. It's like, yeah, just because you get invited uh, to the um, Enclave and stuff like that doesn't mean you're going to actually get uh, become a member of the Inner Sanctum. But because of Fitz's book, which we now know wasn't Fitz's book, but to, to everyone else, except for Nikki and them, to everyone else on the outside, it looks like it's Fitz's book, but it's like it gave him the answers he needed to answer the question because he had to pass a test. And they were so shocked. They're like, uh, ugh. They were so, especially Price. He's like, all right, I underestimate you, you crafty bastard, for you to be able to, like, slip your way into our group. But it's like, right, uh, got the mallet. But the problem is Russell, his, his plan from the beginning is like, oh, I've been planning this for months. I have all my men. I've been waiting for lapses in all your security. I know who you are. And now I've got people positioned everywhere to go after your family. So you either let me go with the mallet or you're done. Oh, you and you can't come after me either because I have Fitz's journal that will expose everything about you. So if anything happens to me, that gets exposed to the world. Sadly, they tussled and... Nikki and Henry got found, and Russell's like, oh, look at you, you're so slick, and takes the real hammer, and I'm like, you guys are just gonna let Russell leave, I mean, Price left, but I think that's because everything was going down, but it's like, right, uh, they're trying to steal the mail, it's like, what, you're just gonna let him walk away, but regardless, turned into a pretty dope action sequence, again, this show does um, action amazingly, and just with just the way it shoots and hand choreographs um, its uh, fight scene, it's pretty dope. There was an interesting uh, question that Mia brought up at the beginning when she was talking to Ryan. She was like, right, when Russell is dealt with, what's going to happen to me afterwards? She's like, what? It's like, what, are you guys going to want anything to do with me? And Ryan didn't get to finish, but he was basically saying, of course. Because the thing is, Mia's assuming the worst because she heard parts of those conversations. She now knows the truth of what she is, which is kind of why Nikki didn't want to tell her, didn't want to burden her with this. But it all plays into what Jilan wanted in the first place to create distance between Nikki and Mia anyway. But um, Mia was so intent on getting her revenge, she went after Russell. And because if she, because if she, I'm glad that, I'm not glad, but. If, if she was there, like, even with Russell with the gun towards her, she's like, right, you won't shoot me because you need me. If she had gotten the opportunity, she would have probably killed Russell then and there. 
Uh, but Ryan sadly walked out and says, Ryan, I can't shoot you. And he shoots Ryan instead. And the moment that all happened and Nikki was coming, I was like, she's going to run away, isn't she? And she does because she apologizes to Ryan. She's like, this is my fault. I'm sorry. And the moment she started running, I was like, she's going to think that Nikki and them will never forgive her because they'll think it's her fault. Which, what does she turn to in this situation? None other than Jilan because she feels like, right, like I can't go back to the Shin family. They'll never forgive me. Well, they're like... Which is, you know, but it's because she's assuming the worst in herself. It's like, right, uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm this hybrid. I'm this thing. Like, I'm going to cause so much trouble and death. And, uh, like, Nikki and them, they'll never forgive me. Even Jilan, like, even she uh, leaning into that, which is such because she knows because she knows Nikki enough to know that won't be the case, that Nikki won't back down that. But she needed to say that to push uh, me a further from Nikki and closer to her, which is like you, you, you're so manipulative. But the thing is, like Nikki, none of them will ever blame Mia because, as I'm, you know, yes, family makes mistakes, but also what happened to Ryan isn't on her. That's Russell. He's the one that shot. You know, the fact is, he's willing to do that. That's Russell. Like that doesn't on it isn't on her, but she's caring so much about, and in, in the sense of she's carrying the burden of you know what she is. And she's just so she's just so sure that that family will give up on her. It's like, right. But it's like, no, your family, we love you. Like, no matter what your circumstances are, because currently Ryan's the only one in the family because Mia, Jen, as well as Althea don't know the truth. Um, the only ones who do now are Ryan and Henry. And the reason why. Nikki didn't tell the rest of the family because like, right, just like she didn't want to tell Mia from the beginning. She doesn't want everyone to worry. I don't think she's going to, they're not, because even Ryan, upon hearing about it, he's like, oh, poor Mia. It wasn't like a thing of like, oh my God, we should get away. He's like, no, he was concerned for her and she didn't hear that part of the conversation. But it's like, yeah, they love her. She is family. And when family's in trouble, they're going to, they come, this family is so, once again, closer than they've ever been in so long after the events, after season one. So, like, when, no matter what trouble comes their way, they've weathered so many storms before. Nikki being gone for three years and coming back. Everything with the weapons, finding out about her being from the warrior bloodline. This family is prepared for any storm that comes their way, and they're willing to give Mia shelter from it. They have been ready to protect her from, um... Russell, and I think just all of that, her guilt over it, she's just assuming the worst in that family. It's like, right, like, you know, I'm not, you know, because I'm, I'm her, I am Maylene's niece. I'm not her son. I'm responsible, you know, so she's like, right, the only family I have left isn't going to want anything to do with me. I mean, once again, her mom's gone. Her dad betrayed her to save his own family. So I think a lot of that culminated with what she is, you know, and that's the sad, like, the sad thing, because like I said, Nikki's family wouldn't give up on her, but... Now they're going to have to try and get to her before she kills Russell like Jilan wants. Because once she does, for all we know, that will probably trigger um, her becoming like that hybrid. Like, Because also, like once you go down that path, there's no going back. Once again, like I brought up earlier, like Jilan, she's kind of dealing with it in her own self. But it's still like, no, she calls so much death and destruction in her own way. And it's like, because also you probably think like, Besides just a means to an end, you probably think Jilan probably wants Mia to be like her too because that way she doesn't, she's not alone in this world. Because currently she has no one. She doesn't have Kerwin. Even, I mean, she was under the impression he was dead, but now it's like she doesn't have him. Doesn't currently have her sister's ghost haunting her either. So having Mia be a killer like you makes you not so alone in this world because it, now it just, you feel so dark and stained because of that. And now it's like knowing that there's someone else who wants Russell dead just as much as you. Like in her own way, she feels like she has a kindred spirit, even though once again, she's still kind of a means to an end. I think that's even a complicated, you know, situation for Jilan to kind of be in, but still. Like feelings wise, whether it's like, oh, am I being just a hundred percent sincere, or I just a hundred percent user? Like I said, I think it's a little column A, little column B, but it's definitely going to be interesting to see uh, where the next episode takes us going forward with all of this. Uh, but really, that's all I'm going to talk about. To so the next time you meet, be happy, be safe, low light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good.